Good afternoon, Grade 7. Today, we are going to start discussing third quarter topics, and we will start with Quarter 3, Module 1, Describing Motion. What I need to know. General objectives. Describe the motion of an object in terms of distance or displacement, speed or velocity, and acceleration. At the end of this module, you should be able to 1. Describe the motion of an object in terms of distance or displacement, speed or velocity, and acceleration. 2. Differentiate quantities in terms of magnitude and direction. And 3. Create and interpret visual representation of the motion of the object such as motion graphs. What I know. Choose the letter of the best answer. Write the letter of your choice on your answer sheet. See pages 3 to 5 of quarter 3, module 1. What's in? Your grade 6 science class opened your mind regarding the effect of friction and gravity in the movement of objects. You have learned that the presence of friction, which is a force between objects in contact, hinders or slows down the motion of objects. Friction between ground and the shoes is one example. So we are able to walk without slipping or sliding because there is a force between the ground and your shoes. If there's no friction, then we won't be able to keep walking or running on the ground. Thus, because of this opposing force, some of the kinetic energy is converted to heat. But of course, we can't get away with friction because all objects in contact will definitely encounter this. So one of the products of friction is heat. So when you strike a matchstick against the side of a matchbox, heat is produced as well as light. The same is true when you rub two uh, wooden sticks together. So when you do this, uh, heat is produced as well as light. With the case of gravity or gravitational force, it causes objects to fall downward in a faster rate, accelerate the objects, and increase their velocity as pulled down towards the center of the Earth. So in this picture, we have three balls that are thrown upward. So after a few seconds, of course, these balls are going to fall downwards. Why? Because they are being pulled towards the center of the Earth. So this force that causes all objects to be pulled towards the center of the earth is called as gravity or gravitational force. So with this in mind, are you now ready to explore more about motion? So movement is evident all around us. In fact, the universe is filled with such things in motion such as huge galaxies, planets, and stars, to tiny molecules, atoms, and electrons. So all of these things that I have underlined uh, shows movement or motion. So we may encounter slow or fast, simple or complex, or even smooth or erratic motions. So there are so many ways by which we can describe motion in terms of its variety, such as falling leaves, soaring eagle, flying kite, a running man, a living frog, walking dog, sliding box, vibrating charges, a crawling baby, and swimming spaceships. So all of these pictures that we have on this slide are some examples of motion. With the fast emerging technology that we have today, we are challenged to invent things like bullet trains, airplanes, and even spaceships that will enable us to move faster, farther, higher, and deeper. Truly, you can say that we are living in a restless universe. What's new? Can you tell if something is moving? Look at the pictures below. Check the box if it shows that the object is moving. If not, draw a cross. So number one, the tree is moving with respect to the sun. Two, the girl walking on the road is moving with respect to her bag. Three, the boy is walking with respect to the ball he is holding. And four, the ball rolling on the floor is moving with respect to the rock. So were you able to answer them correctly? What is it? Describing motion. Motion is a change in position with respect to a fixed point. Before describing motion, you must first learn to tell exactly where it is positioned, that is, in terms of how far it is from the point of reference and its direction relative to that point of reference. 
there are three ways where we can describe the position of objects. So number one, we can describe the position of an object through visuals. So, for example, we have here figure 1, a ball pushed to the right. So, the ball is positioned 5 steps to the right. The starting point of our visual is 0. Next, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. So, here we can say or we can tell where the object is positioned. It is positioned 5 steps to the right. Another way that we can describe the position of objects is, number two, describing the position of the objects using diagrams. So, figure number two shows the position of a moving car for the same time interval. At zero second, the car is at zero meter, the starting point. Next, at 10 seconds, the car is positioned at 50 meters. At 20 seconds, the car is positioned 100 meters. And at 30 seconds, the car is positioned 150 meters. So let us answer the following questions. Number one, what is the initial position of the car? When we say initial position, we mean the start. Next, what is its final position? Two, what is the position of the car at 20 seconds? And three, at what time is the position equal to 100 meters? Next, another way that we can describe the position of objects is by describing the position using a position time graph. So using the data on the table, we can make a position time graph by plotting time on the x-axis while the position is plotted in the y-axis. The straight diagonal line through the points in the graph describes the position of the ball at any given time. So here we have table 1, position of the car versus time. So time is in second and position of the car is in meter. At 0 second, the car is at 0 meter, the starting point. At 10 seconds, 50 meters. At 20 seconds, 100 meters. And at 30 seconds, it is at 150 meters. Now, let us plot our uh, data in this graph. So, here we have a uh, horizontal line and then we have a vertical line. The horizontal line is your x-axis. So, let's mark it as x. And your vertical line is your y-axis. So, uh, we are going to mark our starting point with 0. So, the starting point of our graph is the zero point. Okay. Next, we are going to label our x-axis as time in second. So, yung variable na time ay ipaplat natin sa x-axis dun sa horizontal line. And, ipaplat naman natin ang position in meters sa y-axis. So, next, we are going to put the uh, value of time sa x-axis. So, kung mapapansin nyo dito, Ang atin pong uh, time is in multiples of 10. So, ganun din ang gagawin natin dito sa graph natin. So, 0, 10, 20, 30. Next, dito naman sa position of the car natin, you can see that it is in multiples of 50. So, sa ating y-axis, ganun din ang gagawin natin. 0, 50, 100, 150. Next, the next thing to do is to plot your data. Okay? So, at 0 second, the car is positioned at 0 meters. So, lagyan natin dito ng point. Okay? So, next. At 10 seconds, the car is positioned at 50 meters. So, hanapin lang natin yung 10 sa x-axis at hanapin natin yung 50 sa y-axis. Kung saan mag-intersect or mag-meet yung dalawang linya, lagyan nyo po ng dot. Next. At 20 seconds, the car is positioned at 100 meters. Hanapin ang 20 sa x-axis at 100 sa y-axis and then plot your data. Next, at 30 seconds, the car is positioned at 150 meters. So, look for 30 in the x-axis and 150 in the y-axis. Kung saan mag-intersect or mag-meet yung mga lines natin, lagyan nyo ng dot. Then, afterwards, draw a straight diagonal line 
through the points in your graph. So, what do you notice? Meron ba kayong napansin sa ating line? So, saan papunta yung line natin? Tapos, as time increases, what happens to position? Okay? So, meron ba kayong napansin na pattern? Meron ba kayong napansin sequence? Describing motion. Motion is defined as a change in position for a particular time interval. It is relative to the observer's point of reference. In determining the change in position that the object travels, we can express it in two ways. First is by using distance and the second one is by using displacement. So, ang motion daw, change in position. Nagbago ng position ang isang object for a particular time interval. Ang motion ay relative or nakadepende sa observer's point of reference. So, meron tayong ginagamit na mga stationary objects or mga objects na hindi gumagalaw para masabi natin na nag-move ang isa pang object. Tapos, sa pagdedetermine ng change in position ng isang object, pwede daw natin gamitin ang mga... Uh, ang mga quantities like uh, distance and then displacement. So, let us know the difference between distance and displacement. Let us examine this figure below. So, here we have a moving car. So, yung car po natin ay dito ang starting point. Okay? So, nag-move yung car natin 10 meters going to the east. Tapos, pagdating dito, bigla siyang lumiko ng 4 meters to the south. Tapos, pagdating dito, lumiko ulit yung car natin ng 10 meters to the west. So, alamin natin kung alin dyan ang distance at alin ang displacement. So, in figure number 4, the distance traveled by the car is represented by the broken lines. It refers to the length of the entire path that the object traveled. Tapos, Ang distance, it is a scalar quantity. Ano ibig sabihin nun? It only has magnitude but no direction. Okay? So, ang mga units for distance ay kilometers, meters, inches, and feet. So, dito sa ating figure number 4, nasaan dito ang distance? Lahat ng broken lines na ito, yung mga putol-putol na linya, yan po ang nagre-represent sa distance. Kung mapapansin nyo, yung distance, siya po yung length, yung haba of the entire path, yung kabuuan na dinaanan ng object. So, lahat ng dinaanan ng object na mayroong broken lines dito sa ating drawing, yun po ang distance. Ang distance ay scalar quantity. Ibig sabihin, meron lang siyang magnitude, kung gano'n lang kalayo, length, pero wala siyang direction. Okay? So, lahat ng ito ay distance. Now, in figure number 4, the total distance traveled is computed by adding all of the all of the uh, distance. So 10 meters plus 4 meters plus 10 meters. So lahat ng mga dinaanan ng ating car, ia-add lang natin together to get the total distance traveled by the car. So it is equal to 24 meters. So, 24 meters is the total distance traveled by the car. Now, ano naman ang displacement? So, ang displacement naman, isa siyang vector quantity. Ano ibig sabihin ng, quanti ng vector quantity? Meron siyang magnitude, meron din siyang direction. So, ang ating displacement is represented by a continuous line. So, kanina, do sa naunang slide, yung ating distance is represented by all of these broken lines. Ngayon, nasa naman ang ating uh, displacement. So, ang displacement natin ay ito hanggang dito. Yung continuous line na yan, yan po ang nagre-represent sa displacement. So, ano ba ang displacement? So, displacement, it refers to the shortest distance between the object's two positions, like the distance between its point of origin and its point of destination, no matter what path it took to get to that destination. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Nagsimula ang kotse dito sa point of origin or sa starting point natin dito. At dito siya nagtapos sa ating point of destination or sa ating final position. So, yung uh, distance sa pagitan ng point of origin at point of destination, yun po ang ating displacement. 
So, ang displacement, sabi dito, it has the same unit as that of distance, pero ang pinagkaiba lang niya sa distance, meron siyang kasamang direction. So, in this figure number 4, ang displacement ng kotse natin ay 4 meters to the south. So, saan po nang galing yun? Dito. Nag ang minessure natin sa displacement ay starting point up to the final position. So, simula dito hanggang dito is 4 meters to the south. So, let's give more examples for distance versus displacement. So, in figure number 5, we have a dog. So, the dog travels a distance of 10 meters, 10 meters to the east, 5 meters to the south, and another 10 meters to the west. So, nasan dito ang distance at nasan po ang displacement? So, lahat ng broken lines, yan po ang nagre-represent sa distance. Distance is the length of the entire path that the object traveled. So, lahat ng dinaanan ng dog, yun po ang distance. So, 10 meters plus 5 meters plus another 10 meters. So, ang distance traveled by the dog ay 25 meters. Now, nasa naman po ang displacement? So, sabi natin ang displacement, shortest distance between the object's initial position. Ito ang initial position niya. Dito siya nagsimula. And final position. Dito po siya nagtapos. So, Ang atin pong displacement ay simula dito hanggang dito. So, displacement is represented by a continuous line. So, ang displacement ng dog ay 5 meters to the south. So, meron siyang kasamang magnitude, may kasama ring direction, ang displacement. Okay, here are other examples. So, first we have letter A, a ball rolling. Letter B, a vehicle moving. And then, a dog running towards home. So, simula natin sa uh, ball. Okay? So, ano ang tawag natin dito sa broken lines na to? How about dito sa continuous line na to? Next, what do we call this broken lines? So, nag-move yung vehicle natin papunta doon. And then, what do we call this line? The continuous line. Next, uh, the dog is moving towards home. So, anong tawag natin dito sa broken lines na to? And how about this continuous line? So, dito, lahat po ng mga broken lines represents distance. At lahat po ng mga continuous line, they represent displacement. So, ano napansin nyo sa displacement ng letter B at letter C? kumpara sa distance niya. Ano ang mas mahaba? Distance or displacement? Okay, so sa letter B and letter C, ang mas mahaba po ay distance. So, distance is longer than displacement. Yung displacement mas maigsi. Kasi diba sabi natin, ang distance, length of the entire path that the object traveled. Samantaling yung displacement, shortest distance between the object's initial and final position. Kaya dito sa letter B at sa letter C, mas mahaba ang distance kaysa sa displacement. Now, how about in letter A? Ano ba papansin nyo sa distance at sa displacement ng ball? Meron bang mas maigse or mas mahaba? Or are they the same? So dito sa letter A, same lang ang distance at displacement. Why? Take a look kung paano nag-move ang object natin. Kanina, dito sa ating car, moving car, yung object natin ay hindi straight na nag-move. Palikuliko siya. As well as sa letter C, yung dog, palikuliko rin po siya. Kaya, anong nangyari? Distance is longer than displacement. Pero dito sa ating letter A, yung ball natin nag-move ng straight, diretso. That is why ang kanyang distance at ang kanyang displacement ay equal lang po. Next, let us go to speed versus velocity. So speed is defined as the distance traveled by divided by the time of travel. Ang units natin for speed are kilometers per hour, miles per hour, and meters per second. So these units can be used to express speed. 
And we can compute for speed using the equation speed equals distance travel divided by time of travel. So let us solve a problem involving speed. Suppose that a car travels 150 meters in a time interval of 30 seconds. What is the car's speed? So to solve for this, let us do the following. First, identify natin yung given. So ano ba ang binigay sa problem? 150 meters and 30 seconds. So what is 150 meters? So 150 meters is your distance traveled. Okay, distance traveled equals 150 meters. Time of travel equals 30 seconds. Ano ang formula for speed? Speed equals distance travel divided by time of travel. To solve, substitute lang natin yung given. Speed equals 150 meters divided by 30 seconds. Tapos pag dinivide natin yan, uh, 150 divided by 30, ang sagot ay 5. Tapos, ang magiging unit po natin ay meters per second. So, the speed of the car is 5 meters per second. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Kada isang segundo, ang car natin ay uh, bumibilis ng 5 meters. So, let's have another problem. A motorcycle travels at a distance of 150 meters in 5 seconds. What is its speed? So, to solve for this, unahin natin ang given. So, distance equals 150 meters, time 5 seconds. Ang unknown or nawawala ay speed. So, ang symbol natin for distance traveled, small letter d, time traveled, small letter t, at ang symbol natin for speed ay small letter v. Okay? Ang formula natin for speed, speed equals distance divided by time. So, substitute. Speed equals 150 meters divided by 5 seconds. So, 150 divided by 5 is 30. Tapos ang unit natin, meters per second. Kada isang segundo, ang binibilis ng object natin ay 30 meters. Okay? So, that's the answer. Another problem. A car travels at a distance of 70 kilometers in 2 hours. Solve for the car's speed. So, to solve, write again the given. So, distance is 70 kilometers, time is 2 hours, speed is unknown. Formula, speed equals distance divided by time. Solution, speed equals 70 kilometers divided by 2 hours. So, pag dinivide, 70 divided by 2 is 35, ang unit natin kilometers per hour. Ibig sabihin, kada isang oras, yung ating object ay nagmumove or bumibilis ng 35 kilometers. And last problem for speed, an airplane travels at a distance of 500 meters in 10 seconds. What is the airplane's speed? So to solve, right again the given, distance is 500 meters, time 10 seconds, speed unknown. Formula, speed equals distance divided by time. Solution, 500 meters divided by 10 seconds. So, 500 divided by 10 is 50. So, ang unit natin ay meters per second. Kada isang segundo, nagmumove yung object natin or bumibili siya ng 50 meters. Okay, next. In describing the motion of an object, you can also include the direction to where it is going. So, we use the term velocity to describe speed with direction. So, kapag yung ating speed may kasama ng direction, ang tawag na po natin doon ay velocity. And we can compute velocity with this equation. Velocity equals displacement traveled divided by time of travel. So, let's have an example. Suppose the car given in the problem sa speed is moving towards the east. Then, what is its velocity? So, to solve, let us again write the given. So, ang given po natin ay displacement traveled 150 meters to the east. Time of travel, 30 seconds. So, itong problem na to, ito yung problem natin kanina sa speed. Ha? Dinagdagan lang natin ng direction na east. Okay, so to solve for velocity, use the formula. Velocity equals displacement travel divided by time of travel. So substitute, velocity equals 150 meters east divided by 30 seconds. So 150 divided by 30, ang sagot ay 5. Okay, 
So, 5 meters east. So, ang velocity, same lang siya sa speed, pero ang naiba lang, meron po siyang kasamang direction. So, another problem for velocity. A motorcycle travels 3,000 meters northward in 15 seconds. So, what is its velocity? So, to solve, let us write the given displacement. So, yung D natin dito will uh, now represent displacement. Displacement equals 3,000 meters northward. So, pag displacement ang nilalagay natin, don't forget the direction. Time is 15 seconds, velocity unknown. So, para ma-differentiate natin yung speed sa velocity, lagyan natin ng arrow dito sa ibabaw ng small letter V natin yung velocity. Okay, formula natin, velocity equals distance, uh, displacement rather, displacement divided by time. So, ang solution natin, just substitute 3,000 meters northward divided by 15 seconds. So, 3,000 divided by 15 equals 200. So, unit natin, meters per second, tapos lalagay lang natin yung northward. So, this is the velocity of the object, speed plus direction. Another problem, a car travels at a distance of 200 kilometers southwest in 25 hours. Solve for the car's velocity. So, to solve, write again the given, displacement equals 200 kilometers southwest. Time, 25 hours. Velocity, unknown. So, to solve for velocity, velocity equals displacement divided by time. So, ang solution natin, uh, velocity equals 200 kilometers southwest divided by 25 hours. So, 200 divided by 25 is 8. So, 8 kilometers per hour southwest. So, speed plus direction is velocity. And last one for velocity, an airplane travels at a distance of 555 meters east in 10 seconds. What is the airplane's velocity? So to solve for this, once again, write the given. Displacement equals 555 meters east. Time, 10 seconds. Velocity, unknown. Formula natin, velocity equals displacement divided by time. Solution, Velocity equals 555 meters east divided by 10 seconds. So, 555 divided by 10 is 55.5 meters, e, uh, meters per second east. So, speed na may kasamang direction is called velocity. Next, the average speed can be calculated using the total distance traveled divided by the total time of travel. So, total distance divided by total time traveled is average speed. So, it is considered average because it represents the object's speed throughout his whole travel. So, during the movement, there were instances that its speed would vary. So, kapag nagbago ang speed ng isang object at an instant, we call this as instantaneous speed or speed at a given instant. So, likewise, ang instantaneous velocity po is the velocity of an object in an instant. So, ang clue nyo dito ay yung salitang instant. So, pag nakita nyo, speed at an instant, instantaneous speed. Velocity at an instant, instantaneous velocity. So, ang instantaneous speed may be equal greater than or less than the average speed. Uh, meron tayong constant motion when there is no change in the instantaneous speed of the object. Kapag ang kanyang uh, speed ay the same all throughout, so ang ating speed ay constant or it does not change. Next, do you know this instrument? How about this one? So, this is the speedometer. So, a speedometer measures the instantaneous speed of a vehicle. So, meron tayo mga speedometers sa mga iba't ibang klase ng vehicles like cars, trucks, motorcycles, and others. So, it is important to know the speed in an instant so that drivers can determine if they are still driving within the given speed limit. So, here in the Philippines, ang minimum natin ay 60 kilometers per hour. 
at ang maximum speed limit natin ay 100 km per hour. So, kailangan, meron sila mga speedometer sa mga sasakyan nila para alam nila kung nababiolate na ba nila yung minimum and maximum speed limits. Next, acceleration. Do objects move in constant speed all the time? Do they travel in one direction? So, in reality, objects do not always move in constant velocity. So, this is true with tropical storms. So, mga tropical storms natin, they move at varying speed, iba-ibang speed nila, at minsan naiiba rin yung direction nila. So, this change is what we call as acceleration. So, acceleration is the change in speed or velocity for a time interval of 1 second. Pag nagkaroon ng change ng speed or direction or both, we call that as acceleration. So, there are three ways in which an object may accelerate. First, if the object changes the speed, so kapag bumilis or bumagal, merong acceleration. If the object changes direction of travel, pag nabago ang direction, merong acceleration. If the object changes both in speed and direction, pag parehong speed at direction ang nabago, may acceleration. So, object accelerates when it moves from slow to fast. So, pag bumibilis ang isang object, ang tawag natin doon ay positive acceleration. It accelerates. Tapos naman, uh, an object decelerates when the motion is fast to slow. Pag bumagal ang object, ang tawag naman natin doon ay negative acceleration. So, we can express acceleration using the units kilometer per hour squared, miles per hour squared, or meter per second squared. Yung mga squared natin dito ay naka-superscript, nakataas. So, later papakita ko. In equation, we can solve for acceleration as acceleration equals change in velocity divided by elapsed time. So, paano natin isosolve ang acceleration? Final velocity minus initial velocity divided by elapsed time. So, let us apply this equation to the sample problem. Starting from rest, you walk with a velocity of 10 meters per second and reach school after 600 seconds. How fast did you accelerate? So, ang given values, ang ating initial velocity, nagsimula ka sa, sa 0 meters per second, tapos nagtapos ka ng 10 meters per second nung nasa school ka na. Nakarating ka ng school, 600 seconds. What is the acceleration? So, gaano ka kabilis nakarating ng school? So, to solve for this, okay, so here's our values. Again, VI, 0, VF, 10 meters per second, time, 600 seconds, acceleration, unknown. Solution, okay, here's our formula. Acceleration equals VF minus VI. Ano yung VF? Final velocity, initial velocity divided by time. 10 meters per second minus 0 meters per second divided by 600 seconds. So, una muna mag-minus. 10 minus 0 is 10 divided by 600. Ang sagot, 0 0.02 meter per second squared to school. So, kada isang segundo, ikaw ay bumibilis ng 0 0.02 meters per second papunta ng school. So, let's have more problems for acceleration. So, a motorcycle has an initial velocity of 65 meters per second. After 10 seconds, its final velocity is 105 meters per second. What is the motorcycle's acceleration? So, gaano ang binilis ng motorcycle natin after 10 seconds? So, ang given natin, initial velocity, nagsimula sa 65 meters per second, nagtapos ng 105 meters per second, BF final velocity. Time, 10 seconds. Acceleration, unknown. To solve for acceleration, gagamitin natin ang formula po na ito. Acceleration equals VF minus VI divided by T. So, acceleration equals 105 meters per second minus 65. Una muna yung malaki bago yung maliit. Una lagi ang BF bago ang VI. Divided by 10 seconds. So, mag-minus muna, 105 minus 65 equals 40 meters per second. Divided by 10 seconds. 40 divided by 10 is 4. 
So, ang magiging sagot ay 4 meters per second per second. So, saan ang galing yun? Dito po. 4 meters meter per second per second or 4 meter per second squared so ito yung sinasabi ko naka superscript yung 2, yung squared natin hindi siya pantay nung m tsaka nung s tsaka nung 4 medyo nakataas siya ng konti so ang sagot natin the object accelerates at 4 meter per second squared next another problem Let's go to another problem. A car has an initial velocity of 50 km per hour. After 5 hours, its final velocity is 70 km per hour. Solve for the car's acceleration. So, ganon binilis ng kotse. So, given natin, VI, 50 km per hour. BF, 70 km per hour. Time, 5 hours. Acceleration, unknown. So, para ma-solve, let us use this formula, VF minus VI divided by time. So, substitute 70 km per hour minus 50 km per hour divided by 5. Mag-minus muna bago mag-divide, 70 minus 50 is 20 km per hour divided by 5 hours. So, 20 divided by 5, 4 hours. Ay, sorry, 4. Ang sagot, 4 km per hour per hour. Kada isang oras, ang binibilis ng object natin ay 4 km per hour. So, pwede rin natin isagot 4 km per hour squared. Okay, so tama rin yan. Next, last problem for acceleration. A jeepney has an initial velocity of 786 km per hour. After 2 hours, the jeepney's final velocity is 1000 km per hour. What is its acceleration? So, to solve, uh, write the given. Initial velocity, 786 km per hour. Final velocity, 1000 km per hour. Time is 2 hours. Acceleration unknown. So, formula natin, acceleration equals Vf minus Vi divided by time. So, substitute lang po natin. Acceleration equals 1000 km per hour. Minus 786 kilometers per hour divided by 2 hours. So, acceleration equals, mag-minus muna, 1,000 minus 786 is 214. 214 kilometers per hour divided by 2 hours. So, 214 divided by 2 is 107. So, 107 kilometer per hour per hour. Or, pwede rin nating 107 kilometer per hour squared. So, yan. So, yung object natin, kada isang oras, ang kanyang binibilis ay 107 km per hour. Okay, so what's more? Match the terms in column A with magnitudes and units in column B. Write only the letter on the space provided before each number. So, dito, halimbawa, uh, 97 kilometers. Ano ba ang... 97 kilometers. Is it acceleration, speed, distance, velocity, or displacement? So, ang sagot dito, ang 97 kilometers ay distance. Yan. Tapos yung iba kayo na bahala. Next, independent assessment 1. Write the word fact if the statement is true and the word bluff if it is wrong. So, 1. All things here on earth are moving with reference to the sun because the earth is rotating around the sun. 2. A motorcycle is moving at a velocity of 60 km per hour. After 30 minutes, it slows down and completely stops. The motorcycle's acceleration is negative. 3. Distance and displacement are the two important considerations in determining the velocity of an object. 4. A ball tied with a string and whirled in a circular path has a uniform velocity but did not experience acceleration. And 5. Objects starting and ending on the same point has zero displacement. So, fact or bluff. Next, independent activity 2. To answer the trivia, choose the letter that corresponds to the correct answer. Place the letter in the box above the exercise number at the bottom page. So, ang trivia na sasagutan nyo is this. Known as the peregrine falcons of the sea, that moves at an estimated speed of 45 miles per hour, this is the fastest shark recorded that lives in tropical seas like here in the Philippines. Do you know what type of shark is this? 
So, para masagot nyo yung uh, tanong na kung anong klaseng shark itong nasa picture na ito, you need to answer. Okay? You need to answer independent activity 2. 1. Change in velocity per unit of time. So, mamimili kayo sa letters na A, P, M, N. 2. Distance traveled by the object divided by the time. Okay? 3. Speed plus direction equals... And for change in position relative to a fixed point is known as, okay, so yung mga letters na pinili ninyo, susulat nyo lang siya dito para mabuo ninyo yung words na hinahanap natin para ma-reveal kung anong uh, tawag sa shark na ito. Independent assessment 2. The data below were obtained from a 500 meter dash marathon competition in Bulacan. Athletes are from Hagonoy, Malolos, Giginto, Paombong, and Plaridel. Recorded time in second, 77.8, 76.5, 78.9, 77.4, 80.4. So, you are going to answer the question, saan kukunin ng sagot? Dun sa table, sa naunang slide. So, which of the following statements are true? Mark a check. If the statement is true, uh, on the space provided before each number, and mark cross if false. So, check or X lang tayo. 1. Malolos athlete is the fastest runner in the finals. 2. Hagonoy athlete beats Paumbong athlete by 0 0.4 second. 3. The winner recorded has a speed of 38,250 meters per second. 4. Rank 5 wins with a final speed of 6.22 meters per second. And 5, the athlete from Giginto emerges as rank 4 in the finals. Next, independent activity number 3. Write uh, greater than, less than, or equal inside the box to describe the motion of each set of objects. So, para masagot nyo to, para malagyan nyo ng uh, less than, greater than, or equal, uh, kailangan mag-solve muna tayo. So, mag-solve kayo ng speed ng object. So, a ball that covers 20 meters in 5 seconds and a ball that covers 40 meters in 10 seconds. So, para ma-solve nyo ito, uh, susulat nyo lang ang formula na uh, speed equals distance divided by time. Tapos, kayo po ay magsusolve. So, 20 meters divided by... 5 seconds. So, 20 divided by 5 is, ang sagot ay 4. Okay? 4 meters per second. Tapos, yung kabila naman po, uh, 40 divided by 10. So, pag dinivide natin yan, ang sagot din dyan ay 4 meters per second. So, kukumpare nyo yung sagot doon sa nasa left side sa nasa right side. So, pag same lang sila, de syempre, lalagay nyo ay equal. So, para masagot nyo yung mga nasa baba pa, yung 2, 3, 4, 5, so, magsusolve din kayo. Tapos, ang gagamitin yung formula ay speed equals distance divided by time. Next, independent assessment 3. Do you want to know the mystery animal? To reveal the mystery animal, answer the given problems. Shade the letter which corresponds to your answer in the box, in the answer box. Take note of the unshaded boxes because they will reveal the mystery animal. So, this mystery animal is one of the slowest animals in the world with a top speed of 0 0.003 miles per hour. It is so slow that algae can grow on it. Okay? So, para malaman natin kung ano yung mystery animal, kailangan mag-solve muna tayo. So, for example, ito number 1. A motorist covers a distance of 20 miles in 3 hours. Calculate his speed. So, para ma-solve natin yung speed, velocity, uh, this, uh, speed equals distance uh, divided by time. So, mag-divide tayo. 20 divided by 3. Okay, so ang sagot dito ay 6.67 miles per hour. So, shade mo yung letter ng sagot mo. So, lahat ng mga sagot nyo, shade nyo, tapos yung matitirang letter, yun daw ang bubuin yung mga letters para ma-reveal ang mystery animal. 
Next, what I have learned. Summarize what you have learned from this lesson. Fill out the blanks with the concepts that you have understood in describing motion. So, one, if the object does not change in position at a given time interval, then it is... 2. If the object covers equal distance at equal intervals of time, then it is 3. If the object covers varying distances at equal intervals of time, then it is and 4. For me, it is important to learn how to describe motion. So, because Okay, so next What I can do uh, Solve for the number 1 no? So, a strong typhoon is moving at 180 kilometers per hour and is expected to hit Bulacan after 2 hours. If it will reach Bulacan at a velocity of 210 kilometers per hour, how fast does it accelerate? So, para masolve to, kailangan natin ng formula for acceleration. So, acceleration equals Vf minus Vi Divided by time. So, ito gagamitin nyo para masolve nyo yung problem number 1. And 2, write a short paragraph about preparations and different safety measures needed to be done when there is a sulfur typhoon that might cause the typhoon's destructive motion to damage houses, infrastructure, industries, and agricultural crops, and even the lives of people. So, for your assessment, read the questions carefully and choose the letter of the correct answer. Write your answer on your answer sheet. See pages 17 to 19 of quarter 3, module 1. Okay, additional activity, performance task number 3.1. Using the given data on the table, plot the values as points on the graph. So, we have position of the object versus time. Ang time of travel natin is in second. Distance traveled is in meters. At 0 seconds, 0 meters, 50 seconds, 100 meters, 100 seconds, 200 meters, 150 seconds ay 300 meters. So, para ma-plot natin yung ating uh, data dito sa graph natin, let us first analyze the graph. So, ang ating horizontal line is our x-axis, tapos ang nakaplot dito ay time in second. Tapos, ang ating y-axis ay yung vertical line natin. So, ang nakaplot naman dito ay distance in meters. Tapos, meron na siyang number 0, 50, 100, 150. Tapos, dito naman sa y-axis, 0, 100, 200, 300. So, una natin ipaplot 0 second, 0 meters. So, hanapin ng 0 second at 0 meters, ito po siya, starting point. Next, 50 seconds, 100 meters. So, look for 50 in the x-axis and 100 sa y-axis. Kung saan mag-intersect yung dalawang linya, lagyan ng point. Yan. Look for 100 seconds sa x at 200 meters sa y. Tapos, kung saan mag-intersect, lagyan nyo ng point. So, kayo na magtutuloy nito. Tapos, lahat ng mga points nyo sa graph, connect them with a straight diagonal line. Okay? So, guide question, sasagutan po to. How does your distance time graph look like? And two, what does it tell you about the motion of the object? So, ano daw itsura na inyong distance time graph? Saan papunta ang linya? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Habang tumataas ang time, ano nangyayari sa distance? Next, so for our uh, quarter 3 module 1, uh, describing motion, ito ang dapat nasa answer sheet po ninyo. So, number 1, what I know. What's more, sasagutan ng independent activities 1, 2, 3 and independent assessments 1, 2, 3. What I have learned, what I can do, assessment and additional activities. Ang additional activities will be our performance task number 3.1. Next, pagtapos na magsagot, upload your answer sheets, PDF format in your Google Drive folder. So, ang ating pathway, Science 7, Quarter 3, Module 1 na po tayo. Uh, pwede rin isend ang mga answer sheets in JPEG format sa aking messenger. So, that's all for today. Thank you for attending our Science 7 online class. I hope that you will answer your Quarter 3, Module 1 and send them uh, to me or upload them in your Google Drive folder. So, God bless you all. Goodbye.